from the depths of the earth to finish jewelry worn by so many, a gemstone takes a fascinating journey to reach its final destination. We are rarely lucky enough to understand where so many of the earth's treasures come from and how they reach our hand. There is no doubt that mining affects the lives of many and the environment in which it is conducted. In a world of what is often negative media towards artisanal small-scale mining, we decided to investigate the more positive side of the story behind the path a single gemstone can take as it makes its way from the plains of rural Madagascar to eventually find its way onto the hand of one of the country's leading ladies fighting for women's rights. Our story begins with Madame Zeta Ambani. Years ago, with the decline in agriculture, she decided to try her hand at sapphire mining. In her youth, she found the work rewarding. She was strong and healthy, and would even participate in the underground mining. These days, she continues to work, but with other women, sieving the gravel and sorting the stones. During her early days, mining was enough to sustain her and her family, where farming would no longer provide enough income. Around this time, she was lucky enough to find a large pink sapphire that she sold, along with her fellow miners, for 4 million ariari, roughly equivalent to 1,200 US dollars. Her share of the profit paid for the construction of her house and its furnishings. This also gave her the drive to continue mining for the last 15 years, and she actively teaches the younger generations how to continue in the gem trade. She has taken part in a number of our education projects and puts the knowledge she gained to good use. She can now easily identify stones of value that she has previously been told had no worth as a tactic to bring down her price. <laughs> Madame Zatirambini gives us hope that even at this extreme end of the supply chain, people are working with pride and through gem mining have a means to sustain not only their family but also to teach them and the community around them a valuable trade. The majority of Madagascar's fine gemstones are sold as rough stones directly to foreign buyers from the miners. This leads to a massive deficit in the value addition that could potentially stay within Madagascar. Often, smaller or lower value material falls to the women of the region to sell. This does, however, provide opportunities to derive income for many people. Not only that, but we found that within the communities, there is a passion to both become involved with the gemstone trade and to help rectify the damage caused by mining activities. Another one of our students, Alfonsine Faravavi, has a passion for gems and has even aided us with our teaching. She also works with the rehabilitation of abandoned mine sites, caring for a nursery project growing acacia trees, organized by the German government organization GIZ. <laughs> Yaw zany, 
mandeha le bondwang am so so hai e to avao mbo di ambodikazo ka sia eto fa tsy lavitra anay mihin tsy any fanovalenty am zao sa tena mafala tena faly mihin am zao If a gemstone is not immediately shipped out in the rough, it will usually find its way to the capital and Tananarivo. If one knows where to look, there are brokers and dealers abound within the city. We have worked closely with talented gem cutter and broker Kamara Tahiri for a number of years now. Tahiri was lucky enough to receive a scholarship with the Institute of Gemology Madagascar. Here he learned how to cut and polish gemstones, a profession better suited to his day-to-day -day life dealing with disability. Tahiri has shown how a little knowledge and investment can go a long way. His business has developed over the last three years and he has official status now as a gem trader. He has been able to expand his house and far better provide for his family, with his wife Maria now taking an active role in the business. This is a fantastic continuing success story that shows that Madagascar's gem trade is ready to further blossom to the betterment of its local people. I'm Ke fa ita kusa lijo mafil, tare fa ita kue apa ka ia sa tena nia, anu nia sa kumanu kana mi tiem ba fa ka i far ta fa ta ndi tirik ta ni fil ania nia, si mba mi luma kum tena kue apa kuma pitra piasa na gana ur na sa di pia ni rina sa i, i sar la lunia ni san kelia, na ni san yul la fulu nia rakana nu fa ta mna za ni, ti skua ni san fa pia kana kuna sa sa irula, na mbre sa ka asa ma ndi fa ita na nia mnia i zuma fa ta i fa ta na. Isko mana parita kali dia sana yang YouTube, atau ni yang tira ke publicity sahle. Dia nak fak nak sabu nak kliom mar maru fanfila. Report lapidari. I love stones. I love my work. I love my job. There is a small but promising bespoke jewelry trade in Madagascar and a strong traditional theme underlies these locally produced jewels. Western trends influenced the jewellery culture, but when we met local jeweller Joseph Ramahazamiadana and his son Tahina, we were brought into the artisanal jewellery world of Antinanarivo and eagerly shown its inner workings. Joseph has been working as a manufacturing jeweller for 35 years. He enjoys his work and his business has gradually grown over time and improved his family's livelihood. À la machine pour effectuer, réaliser un modèle compliqué. Et je trouve du plaisir de faire tout ça. Ouais. On ne refuse pas le travail parce que si on, si on a donné des travaux difficiles ou faciles, c'est notre esprit de travail. On a l'esprit professionnel pour pour moi c'est c'est comme ça le travail de l'usine et j'ai le plaisir de faire facile et difficile mais il n'y a pas de différence entre le, tout tout ça. Je fais cette métier pour euh, augmenter tes expériences et pour euh, améliorer tout ce que j'ai créé et augmenter avec toutes choses. Monsieur, je travaille ici, mais mon père m'a beaucoup appris ce métier pour donner une libération. Avec mon père, il a beaucoup d'expérience et il m'a donné toutes les instructions pour comment faire toutes ces choses, cet objet, toute cette, la chaîne, la bague, tout cette le truc qu'on qu a besoin pour les femmes, non pour les femmes, pour, pour tout le monde. Okay. J'aime cette, euh, cette métier pour la fierté, que j'ai créé toute cette chose-là. Il y a un avenir à Madagascar, ce métier, parce que euh, ce métier va donner un esprit d'esprit nouvel avec euh, des tas de choses. Mmh. 
Marie Rabanoro is a lecturer at the University of Antananarivo and current chairperson of the National Human Rights Commission of Madagascar. With her constant diligence in the field of gender equality, we could find no better end destination for our story and our gemstone. You know, it's usually the, uh, the dark side of it that is so uh, much advertised about you know, things like um, how uh, underage girls become prostitutes in the uh, mining areas. You know, that kind of passive role in of, uh, explo being exploited, uh, very negative but um, you know, participating in the uh, production, that I think is something very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the mining industry can offer, you know, I'm thinking of the, uh, the women who come from uh, the southernmost, southernmost regions of Madagascar, uh, where climate change among other factors, has uh, uh, brought them northward uh, to other regions of this country where they hope for a uh, better livelihood. And well, some have come to the uh, uh, mining areas and with the uh, mining industry, you know, they get uh, a real job and with real livelihood which has the potential to become you know a really uh, an activity which is worthwhile not only for the women individually not only for their families but for the uh, national economy and that I think is very important that the the work performed by women uh, should be recognized as uh, bringing a plus, uh, additional value to the uh, economy of the region. Madagascar, along with many other nations across Africa, have seen massive booms in the mining sector, especially in recent years. This incredible wealth needs to benefit the citizens at all levels. Though at this time its benefits may seem a long way off, activities such as small-scale artisanal mining bring means to live for hundreds of thousands of people across Madagascar alone. The beautiful island of Madagascar is facing serious and increasing risks from deforestation. This is primarily caused by the clearing of land for the grazing of cattle, the logging industry, and the rampant felling of trees for the use in the production of charcoal. Yet small-scale mining does also have an impact. Thankfully, as we have seen in villages near Sakaraha, the local people are keen to participate in rehabilitation of this land, and the impact of such work is significant. We hear of sad stories and tragic stories in the media. It is human nature to take an interest in such news, and yet there are stories of hope and happiness that go untold and unseen. Taking a positive mindset on the industry and working to improve it, rather than working to shut it down, should be a global priority. Responsible sustainability is the key to moving artisanal small-scale mining into the future. There is a need for investment, not just of funding, but also time and knowledge. If there is a rational and positive outlook, then there should be a bright future ahead for artisanal small-scale gemstone mining in Madagascar and across the globe. <laughs>